In this video, I'm going to broadly outline of what you can expect and what you will learn from Game Environment Modeling Foundation tutorial series on how to get started modeling in Maya and Maya LT for Environment Artist. The series contains three modules, 53 videos, and nine hours of video tutorials. Each video is specifically focused on teaching you how to use Maya for game environment modeling. So we only will cover the functions, the tools, and the interface as it concerns you learning Maya to model game environments. So let's get started. This first module is extremely important as it lays out the fundamentals of getting started with Maya LT. So here is what you will learn in module one. We'll begin with how to set up your very first project. This is very important as it organizes and maintains all your files inside one single project folder. We'll cover an overview of the interface focused specifically for game environment modeling. Maya is an extremely deep and complex piece of software. So we will only cover the tools, menus and options in the interface that you need to know for modeling game environments. We'll then cover how to master viewport navigation and we'll begin how to work with objects by going through some of the geometry modeling basics. This will give you a good base how you will model environments in Maya. This video will go through how to create polygon primitives, how to manipulate objects such as scale, move and rotate, how to access object component mode and how to rename objects. We'll then dive in into viewport viewing options. We'll go through some of the options such as wireframe view, shaded view, wireframe on shaded, how to adjust viewport background color, and then we'll move right into one of the most important tools in modeling game environments, and that is working with snapping and pivot points, which is one of the most important principles to understand as a beginner. This is something that you're going to be using for as long as you model game environments. Then we'll do a geometry modeling basics exercise, which takes everything that you've learned up to this point and gives you a framework to practice so you can master everything you've learned so far. This exercise goes through how to start and save a new scene, how to set up a human scale reference, how to begin blocking in your environment using primitive basic polygon shapes, how to use component mode, modify edges, vertices, and faces, how to duplicate objects, and how to modify pivot points, and snap all your objects to each other. So there's a lot of principles covered in just this one single exercise video. We'll then cover how to delete vertices, edges, and polygon faces which contains a few important techniques that you should know for how to delete each of those components so you don't destroy or create problems with your objects. We'll cover custom polygon display, which allows you to customize how you view your objects inside the viewport to help and speed up your modeling. We'll then cover three important windows, Outliner, Hypergraph, and Hypershade. These three you will end up using at some point as you model game environments. You will then learn how to create your own custom shelf to add tools and functions that you commonly use that will speed up your workflow. This way you don't have to access the drop down menus but just left click on your custom shelf icon to enable that function. We'll then go through how to save, open and start new scenes as well as how to set existing projects so they're active inside Maya. And last, to finish up this module, you will learn how to delete objects construction history, which will help you to speed up your scene calculation, your viewport, and reduce file size. So this first module is unnecessary, but fundamental for you to understand how to get started modeling game environments. Without this base, you won't be able to get started or understand how to navigate around the interface and access some of the most commonly used tools. In the second module, we now move past 
the basics of Maya interface and begin to cover some of the more important principles, techniques, and methods of modeling game environment assets. So here is what you can expect to learn from the second module. We'll start off by setting up our scene. We'll create a character reference, so we model everything to correct and proper scale. We'll set up our grid, and we'll save our scene. The scene will be used as our starting point for every new file. This way we don't have to set this up every time we create a new scene. We'll then jump right in and begin covering some of the most commonly used modeling tools. We'll start off with Bevel and Connect. By creating a simple square column and using Poly Bevel on the edges and connecting vertices at the top and the bottom. Poly Bevel will introduce a slight edge to our geometry which will make the object look better and Connect is a widely used tool that allows you to connect two vertices with an edge. We'll then expand on using Bevel and Connect on a rectangular column by beveling edges with multiple segments to create more rounded look to your geometry. Next will come probably the most commonly used modeling tool, Extrude. We'll set up a thicker, larger column and extrude faces by showing you how to use extrude thickness and local translate Z, offset, and keep faces together option. We'll then put everything into practice by modeling a column using only extrude. Insert edge loop tool is something you're going to be using a lot to add additional geometry or additional edges to your objects. We'll cover how to properly use insert edge loop tool freely and how to add specific number of segments by covering insert edge loop tool option menu. At this point, we'll take a short break by introducing a modeling exercise. We'll take everything we've covered so far, insert edge, extrude, bevel and connect, and model a simple game asset. This will show you just by using four modeling tools. You can begin creating objects. We'll then move on to modeling a round column and introduce you to mirror geometry which is a great option for modeling half of the object and then mirroring that geometry to the other side, saving you a lot of time in the process. We'll then model stairs, a very common game asset. We'll set up the size and we'll use the modeling techniques we've covered. We'll bevel our edge on the stair. We'll duplicate that one stair to create a stair set, combine the stairs together, merge vertices, so the stairs are one single object. Next, we'll tackle a more complex object. We'll model a arched doorway. We'll go through two different ways to create the same object. First, using a cube and a cylinder, and then a pen to polygon tool. And a second way is using Boolean operations. Both methods will show you different ways to approach the same object. The following two objects will be a wall with a window and a wall with a door. We'll use all of the modeling techniques we've covered up to this point while also beginning to cover modeling principles and methods of approaching creating these objects. We will then go deep into modeling principles. First, we will cover the importance of hard and soft edges. This is a very important principle in modeling, where certain edges of your geometry have to be hard, such as hard surface objects, and other edges have to be soft for more organic objects. We'll discuss both. We'll talk about how to set hard and soft edges in your model, as well as the methods and the workflow of doing so. Second, we will cover the difference between n-gons, quads, and triangles. We will cover which type you should aim for, what your object ends up being inside the game engine, what you should model with, and what you should avoid. Knowing the difference between these three, and which one you should use at different modeling points of the pipeline will help you to keep more organized and maintain proper edge flow of your objects. Third, we will cover how to optimize your model geometry. We'll go through important principles of cleaning up your geometry, dealing with problem areas, and lowering your poly count. Some of the topics we'll cover are merging vertices, removing edges, dealing with unseen faces, combining or welding geometry, and dealing with face normals. Fourth, we'll cover using the cleanup tool. This is a great way 
for Maya to find problems on your objects. We'll use the cleanup tool to look for end guns, which are faces that contain more than four edges and something you should always avoid having on your geometry. You will learn how to find triangles, how to clean up concave faces, how to clean up non-planar faces, and faces with holes. We'll then run cleanup to find lamina faces. This is where one face is sitting on top of another, sharing the same edges and same vertices. And lamina faces are extremely difficult to find yourself, unless you run the cleanup tool. We'll then go through non-manifold geometry, which could cause quite a few problems with your game objects, and finish up with edges with zero length and faces with zero geometry area. So this second module is very heavily focused on showing you the tools and modeling principles to get started with modeling your game environments. We end up covering a lot of topics, and by the end, you should be very comfortable using Maya to begin modeling. In this third final module, we're going to focus on UV. And this is a very important part of production in making your objects game ready. You will often encounter three terms, UV, UV mapping, and UV unwrapping. Each have their own specific definition, but essentially all three are after the same outcome. And it's the process of laying out your UVs and projecting a 2D texture onto a 3D object. So here is what we're going to cover. The first video will introduce you to UV overview. We'll cover the difference between an object with a default set of UVs and an object that's been properly UV'd. We'll take a look at UV editor and a quick way to check your UVs with display checker tiles option enabled. So this first video will introduce you to important concepts, terminology, and UV workspace. We'll then add UV editor icon to our custom shelf for quicker access and cover how to create new materials and assign those materials to your objects. This will allow you to see what your texture would look like on your models. This will require using Hypershade, which is material editing system in Maya and Maya LT. We'll then cover three different ways to use a grid pattern material to check for texture distortion, stretching, and seams. We'll then begin to spend time on UV editor interface and go over some of the important functions in the toolbar to get started. Some of these will include displaying texture image, the importance of using 0 to 1 UV space, selecting, moving, rotating, and scaling your UVs, displaying texture borders, and a few more additional options. Next, we'll begin to UV our first object, and you will learn how to cut, sew, and move and sew your UVs. We'll then cover how to planar UV your objects, how to use automatic mapping, how to UV a cylinder, and how to UV a sphere. UV in spheres is a bit tricky, so I will show you how to create and UV a quad sphere, which will give you an additional option of UV in a sphere. We'll then go through a UV in workflow exercise where we take everything we've learned so far and put it into practice by UV something we created in the second module. Next, you will learn how to save your UV screenshots where you will have a template 2D image of your UV layout that you can bring into Photoshop and use it as a guide to begin texturing. You will also learn how to have multiple objects on one UV screenshot. This will allow you to have one texture that can be applied to multiple objects and each object will have a dedicated space within that UV layout. This will also give you the ability to have one single material that will be used on multiple objects within the scene instead of having multiple materials for each object. Then we'll cover UV shells versus UV sets and principles and concepts behind overlapping UVs and texture seams. And up to this point, everything we've covered so far has been focused on manually unwrapping your objects. And for the next two videos, we're going to download 
install and run free Maya LT bonus tools, which add additional functionality to what you already have inside Maya. And the one tool we're going to cover is Auto Unwrap, which is going to greatly speed up your workflow unwrapping your objects. And you will learn how to begin using Auto Unwrap on a cube, sphere, cylinder, and then a more complex object. Bonus tool Auto Unwrap is going to be a great time saver, but it is very important that we cover how to UV your objects manually first. So you have a very strong foundation for UV new objects and understand the terminology, concepts, principles, and the UV workspace before attempting to do anything automatic and use tools that attempt to do the work for you. And for the last video in the series, you will learn how to preserve UVs. This option will allow you to modify geometry after the object has been UV'd. So expect to learn a lot by the end of the series and finally be able to learn and use 3D software specifically for game environment modeling.